the best way to get better at programming is to practice. In our previous example, we looked at a while loop for performing a counting operation. That's not the best way to do counting though. A better way is to use the for loop, and that's what we'll be looking at in this example. You can pause this video to work on a project on your own, and then come back and restart it to check your answer or get help if you get stuck. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to come back to my previous example and copy the start and end numbers that I got. This just makes my code a little bit faster and easier to write. There's no need to rewrite additional code. So now I have a starting and ending number. And I'm going to say for i in range. And range is going to give us a range of numbers that we can work with. Now, there's multiple ways to use range. We could just give it the ending number. And it will start at 0 and go up to that ending number. Now, it is not inclusive, so we will not see that last number. So if you say range 10, you'll get 0 through 9. We can give it a starting and stopping number. It will start at that first number, and it will end. We're looking at printing every number from the start point up to the end point. So we'll say start, comma, end. As normal, we're going to have the colon. The i that you see here is the index variable that we used before. In fact, some people think that i stands for index because it's indexing into the range. And that's not true. i is there for historical purposes that we're not going to get into. But what i does is it holds my current value. And that's real important because I want to print it out. So I'm going to say print i. Now, notice that we're not asking for odd numbers or anything like that. We're just printing every number. So if I go to run this, if I give a starting number of 5 and an ending number of 15, you will see that it prints from 5 to 14. Because remember, the end is not inclusive. If I go to run this again, and I say go from 13 to 7, because my ending number is greater than my starting number, it does not work. It just does nothing. So this is a question we have to ask ourselves. Just like with the previous one, should we make sure that our second number is larger than our first? And the answer is, it depends. Depending upon our use case, we may need to do that. And we can do that with an input validation loop like we saw in a previous example. You can look at that example in module 5-1 with input validation. We have more videos that you can continue to watch in order to practice your Python programming.